Hello everybody, this is the Comic Book Syndicate, the TV show and web series that reviews comic books and comic book movies. I am your host, Michael. As always, I'm joined by... Bex Luther. Bex Luther, right. And then today's a very special episode because for the very first time, we have our good friend, Harry, as a guest on our show. Harry, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your relationship with comic books. Are you a big comic book fan? Uh, I'd say I'm not a massive comic book fan, but okay. uh, yeah, I do... Partake every once in a while. Okay. Um, I like I, I like obscure comics. I don't really um, read a huge amount of Marvel and DC. Okay. But uh, I read a fair bit of uh, alternative. How about comics, give us give us three uh, alternative comics okay. that you read? <laughs> <laughs> on those five. The Last Man. The on, Last. Okay. Yeah, Why the Last Man? Okay. Favorite. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> okay. Um, I just I love the comedy in it um, and. Yeah, I guess I'm into Batman. I like the Batman comics. Okay. Um, a third one, God. I'm, it's okay. You, <laughs> we can come back to you now. Uh, Name in, five more. In case you can't tell because of his accent, Harry is not from Canada. You are from. From the UK. Right, from Wales, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now in Wales they do yeah. have American comics there, but they're a different format. They're flat and thin uh, and like skinny and big, right? Aren't they? Well, I can't say it, but no, it's <laughs> Okay, I've got, it's okay because I've got some British Don't comics. Don't worry, I'll explain comics. your culture to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Okay, so anyway, here we go. We just watched Birds of Prey. Um, I, I don't know if I should go first. You shouldn't. I'm going to give this one to Becca. Becca, you can start us off. What did you think of this movie? We have gay people in a superhero movie. Confirmed. Canon gays. Okay. Just, how long have we been doing these? Because this is the first time. And is they it? were they were broken up. <laughs> but, you know. When the credits rolled at the end, I believe you looked over and you said this was the best movie you've ever seen. Is that true? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. No, wow. it, I, I, it's not the best movie I've ever seen, but it's definitely up there in some of my favorites. It's definitely a movie I'm going to see a couple more times. And definitely a movie I'm going to put on when I'm feeling sad. Really? And definitely a movie I'm going to put on when dudes are, are playing around with me. And I'm just like, <laughs> I need to watch a, a girl boss movie. And this is the definition of a girl boss movie. Explain girl boss movie. What do you mean by that? It's just like women taking control of themselves and, and being powerful and being like cool and rad. Okay. And, and fun and interesting and not through a male gaze and not overly sexualized, but still wearing clothes that might be considered sexy, but in an empowering way and kicking ass and taking names and, and just hitting dudes in the, the junk a lot. Junk, like a yeah. lot, a lot. Yeah. When dudes go out of a, a, an action movie, like a Fast and the Furious, when they, when they, yeah, when when they leave that kind of movie, they're all pumped up. Like I felt pumped up. Like Wonder Woman, I left the theater feeling seen and feeling heard. As a woman, okay. This movie, I was, I left the theater feeling feared <laughs> and respected. Interesting. Okay. Loved it. It was, it was really gay in in a really female powerful positive way, but without like it feeling forced. It was really not that white. That was cool. That there were so many characters of color. We had two queer women of color just right off the bat. No, mm -hmm. no, nothing about it. They just are mm -hmm. both with like. Great characters, good people, good jobs. Like, like not no. They didn't kill the lesbians. <laughs> That's a good point. Which happens a lot. Yes, we'll get into more into that later. But Harry, oh, first I want to know your first impression. I uh, do you think? Yeah, I thought it was a really fun movie. I just had a really good time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I laughed through a lot of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was very entertaining. Um, and it wasn't. I, I liked that it wasn't about the men in the movie and I didn't mm -hmm. really like the male characters in the movie. They were villains. Sure. And well, I guess the females were sort of <laughs> yeah, half heroines. Few, yeah. But uh, yeah, they were they were really entertaining. And it did it, it chopped back and forth a bit, so some parts start off it, it start off like it was hard to follow, but mm. then I liked how it flowed in the end, how it how it uh, caught up back. Okay. It caught back up with itself yeah no it was really fun for any but i wouldn't say it was my favorite movie <laughs> no <laughs> not your favorite movie of all time so for anyone who I, i'm just going to try and say something really good about this movie for anyone that is put off by this film there's a whole genre of film in the 70s called black exploitation and it's it's just basically a fantasy about the white man is bad 
the white cop is bad, the white boss is bad, let's just beat the shit out of him, right? So this... Yeah, it, fantasy, that doesn't happen in real life. No, well, the, the thing is, is, it is okay to have this fantasy, and the way I see it is, I think there's this, a little bit of backlash with some people that this is like, um, it's like male bashing, but it's not male bashing, it's, to give a specific target, it's toxic masculinity bashing, I would say. But because so, when I watch this, I agree with you. It is it is nice to see a bunch of what is it five women, five six women. Five. five. Yeah, we have uh, we have a white girl, we have an Asian girl, we have a Latino girl, we have uh, an Italian girl, and, and then, a black girl, and a black girl, and it's like and two of them are gay, like you said, right? Well, One's um, Renee scene. Renee is is gay. Okay. And then and, Harley dated a woman. Okay. In, in the opening cartoon credit that's true there you go She's so fine. it's just like battling the patriarchy that's how you pronounce it yes. right there you go see <laughs> so it's like for that i give it credit and i did enjoy it on that level i love the opening animation i like the fact that it jumped out of order but i for a movie that's a comedy i did feel like i didn't really laugh at all until towards the end when the huntress was doing her bit about not being able to properly introduce herself i really laughed at that but I actually thought, uh, you know, sometimes you sit and you watch a movie and you feel like you can feel the vibe of the movie. I thought for sure that you guys were on the same page as me. But when the credits rolled and you said it was the best movie you've ever seen, I was like, wait a minute, what the hell just happened? Because I did not feel that at all. I really felt like, that especially the first half hour was really messy and all over the place. And then once it started following Black Canary and um, Cassandra Kane around, I really liked that part. But then it kept jumping off course. So I wonder if that was a case of studio interference like maybe there was a nut a longer cut and then the studio went in and rejigged the order or cut things out because it felt really disjointed at the beginning you didn't feel that at all becca no i felt i i don't know it just it was like the harley energy i think for me okay. i, I kind of played off of that where it was like go back and forth and like jitter around and then the the pacing was really weird and chaotic okay. it kind of felt like it was like a harley thing yeah. for okay. me at least yeah i feel like agree i I noticed that it was chaotic as well, but it, it felt like it was uh, supposed to be like that, to be a bit put a bit crazy in sure. there. Um, yeah. When we and when, when the movie finished, you and I talked about how it was sort of going for a Deadpool vibe. Did you get that feeling? Yeah, like definitely. DC's trying the comedy, to do their Deadpool. Yeah. Yeah, the sort of breaking the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and and doing a lot of things that it's just, it is sort of a bit a bit like a fantasy. Right. Um, like having like they would show like the bad guy and then they would freeze the frame the camera yeah. freeze the image say their name and say why they have something against harley <laughs> quinn like, that was hilarious it was funny yeah it was, it was good fun. like i like the fact that superhero movies it's like they've exhausted the formula now so now they have to do different things right which i give this movie credit for let's talk about some of the characters okay now obviously the the star of the film is margot robbie as harley quinn i thought she did a better job as harley quinn this movie what do you think becca I think yeah better, she wasn't you know filmed ass first like like in suicide point, squad yeah it, it she was being like oh this is your character she is a person go and margaret robbie is a phenomenal actress and mm -hmm. took that and ran wild with it and i think she was made for that role like she I is agree. she is harley quinn in now comics like now modern harley quinn to it to a t she nails that role she's like like I think she fits Harley Quinn more than like Robert Downey Jr. fits Iron Man. Like there's, Ooh. she was made to be Harley Quinn, but I, she can also do so many other things. But when she is in that, um, the scene where she's doing a parody of Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, mm -hmm. I was like, that's right out of comic for sure. And you know what? That's an example. Her going crazy. I wanted to see that whole scene, but it felt like it chopped it up. Didn't you feel like, uh, like let's see the whole song uncut, just five minutes of dancing and singing. You don't think that would get old? Out of it, I don't yeah. think so, no. I don't think so. Personally, she was I like to see the whole thing. Well, because well, she's crazy. I wonder, yeah. I wonder if there was a director's cut and you found out that it was originally five full minutes long, would you want to see that? Yeah. I don't want to see it, it, but I think okay. it would be weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how it's delivered. Okay. So you liked Margot Robbie as uh, Harley Quinn? Yeah, I thought she was brilliant. Yeah. She was very convincing, for mm. sure. Um, yeah. And it was great how... It's called Birds, Birds of Prey, but right. it was and, a lot of it was her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Basically, and, yeah. she's the star with just with supporting characters around her, right? Exactly. I think that's the point, though, yeah. right? right? Like, yeah. it's, it's Birds of Prey, but her name is also in the title yeah, and the Emancipation of Harley Quinn, right? Like, it's a Harley Quinn movie, but mm. you, I feel like maybe they, they were like, okay, well, why was it a Harley Quinn movie? Well, we have these other characters, right? Mm -hmm. Supplementing her. Yeah. 
So is she is she sort of discovering that she doesn't need a man men in her right. life or a, uh, one man in particular? Yeah. Right, right. right. She's exactly. Got, yeah, female friends. No. <laughs> and then, okay, so let's just go through these characters quickly. So then we have Cassandra Kane, who I, I I don't think I've ever read a comic with Cassandra Kane in my life, to be honest. It's just mm. beyond. It's just past my point of when I was reading uh, Batman. So are you familiar with Cassandra Kane? Yeah, I've, I've read a decent chunk of, of spoiler stuff like that. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, I think she's the one with like one of her roommates is trans and stuff like that. So mm. like, I know it's like so cliche that of course I I read the gay comic, but I did. I <laughs> okay, it. okay. Um, and is this a good adaptation of that character? Uh, I thought she was really interesting because um, like she's a Batgirl at one point too, mm -hmm, right? right? And like they introduce her as a pickpocket, um, and she doesn't seem to have the same morals that like the Bat family typically has, but she also doesn't in the comic. Like she she's kind of on the outside of of the Bat family in that sense, okay. where she plays a little too rough and stuff like that. So I could feel her. I felt it. Okay. It Harry, was there. Harry, what are, you, are you a fan of Cassandra Cain? Uh, you know, I haven't seen her in much in um, many other things, but uh, she was really good in the movie. She was, it was kind of refreshing to have a character like hers mm -hmm. that was more like a sort of real person in sure, a way. Sure, sure. You know, a regular person. Not, yeah. She wasn't over the top like a lot of the other characters are. Right. Um, she didn't. It didn't feel like she was out of comic book. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Yes, I'll agree with that. I think you need. They needed balance when you have exactly. Harley Quinn, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Harley yeah. is insane, <laughs> like actually and also as a character. So you have to balance her with more real people. I think. Yeah. So like the rest of the group was a little more toned down, down to earth, right? Yeah. Okay, so then we have. We'll talk about Renee Montoya. I believe she was introduced on the animated series. I think. Renee? I think uh, so, right? Am I right about that? On um, the Batman the Animated Series? I'm pretty sure that's where I she was I think so. Yeah, I think so. I know so. her best from Batwoman. Okay, what, the TV show? No, the comics. Okay, because okay. Because they're together. Okay, okay. So lesbians. Again. Right. <laughs> and, and, and in the 90s when she was introduced, she was maybe the only Latino or Latina or Latinx uh, character in DC at the time. Maybe mm. one of the only ones, right? So she's a pretty significant character introduced, I believe, in the 90s. I'm not sure where. I think it was the cartoon. So um, Rosie Perez, as most people know, was a bigger, pretty big star in the 90s. So I thought it was cool that they brought her into this. So what did you think of her in this I movie? I loved her. I love that they kept playing with the fact that she's like a, a generic 80s cop and they made yes. fun of her for it throughout the whole movie. Yeah. But it also still works with her character because she is, at the core, an 80s cop just trying to like bust the bad guys mm -hmm. in a corrupt system. And it's like so cliche and everyone around knows it. And I think she knows it. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. it worked kind of well. I, I, and like... It was interesting because, like, you see that whole dynamic in the the, the Gotham police set. Like, right. You see the dynamic between her boss taking the credit for her mm -hmm. case. Yeah. The, the, the men who treat her like garbage. Um, her ex-girlfriend who is the DA's assistant who doesn't have her back. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's real relationships in a kooky comic book thing. I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I really liked her character. I felt that she mellowed the cast down. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Harry, what'd you think? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I wasn't crazy about her character, okay. but okay. Uh, it was, I like how they didn't play into it too much. What you know, did, her what, story, it was what, just like simple and... So what didn't you like about her? Or it was just something specific or you just, she just didn't click with you? No, I just, I just like didn't focus on it too much. Okay. You know? But I, I think maybe that was intentional. They, they just sort of made it uh, pretty clear what her role was and how it was playing out sure. and didn't overplay into that you know didn't over explain okay. it i think is but um i like that the whole dynamic like you're saying mm. between her and and the other guys in the police station i like that they didn't have much of a a voice to be able to like you know they, mm. <laughs> they just got shut down pretty quickly um and yeah the bravado with those guys was mm. ridiculous yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought she was great. And, you know, Rosie Perez, I always thought she was funny back in the 90s or whatever. So she's really cool. Okay, so now we're going to talk about, oh, Black Canary. A completely different version of Black Canary than what we're used to seeing on Arrow. Black Canary's character actually goes back to the 1940s. But in more recent years, she's been portrayed as a singer, which is the version they went with in this movie. Mm -hmm. I thought the actress was great. What did you think of Black Canary? She's phenomenal. That's yeah. my favorite character, for sure, in this movie. Yeah. And my favorite actress, I think, coming out of the movie is going to be her. She 
her playing off of Margaret Robbie. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, Margaret Robbie's the star of this movie, but I think the sleeper, the hit, is going to be the Black Canary performance. Right. Just her singing on stage and the glass vibrating and, like, her attitude and her meekness at first mm-hmm. and, like, her shifts and, 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 I mean, she's Black Canary. Right. I love Black Canary. And they did it right. <laughs> Black Canary is a hard, like, that, that the power is a hard thing to capture in film, but I think they did it right. And I think the key thing with the actress that played her, I'm not familiar with, uh, I don't know who she is, but she was one of the only characters in the movie, or the actors in the movie, that didn't seem like she was acting. She was just playing... She was just natural. She was just playing herself, right? That's what I thought. Harry, what yeah. do you think? Yeah? She was my favorite as well. Yeah? yeah she okay. Was fantastic. As soon as she started singing, I was just like, wow, yep. that's that's amazing. And uh, and then that was really cool how she became a main character. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect because I don't really know much about the... I haven't read the comics for mm-hmm. um, Birds of Prey, but I really loved how her character developed. And she was she was a sort of... She was the first identifiable hero for me, heroine. Sure, sure. Um, because she, you could see she had morals that she was battling mm-hmm. with, mm-hmm. whereas for the others, they didn't have as such strong morals. I, Good I point. Noticed. Interesting. Yeah, and so she became a sort of guide for them a little bit. Um yeah, that's a good point because I guess in any good story, the characters are like placed, uh, like, like along a different spectrum of morality and, and mm-hmm. hardly usually the hero is the almost the most good but in this movie clearly it's not harley in this yeah. movie she's like almost the one of, out of that of a team she's like the worst of the team and she has to learn over the course of the movie right after she sells her out yeah, like right. after, yeah, she, she, girl, she, yeah. after she's just a shitty person all <laughs> the time she kind of, she has so a good arc. So, yeah, no, so she has an arc though, right? Like at the, by the end of the story, she learns, yeah. right? Yeah. She learns. Okay. So yeah, she least... sort of bounces off the other people. As right, well, so. right. She learns. Yeah. Okay, so she yeah. becomes, she sort of has her arc from being bad to good, but it's more complex than that. But I like the fact that they did that. Okay. So there's one more character in the Birds of Prey we're going to talk about, and that's the love of my life, Mary Elizabeth <laughs> Willstead. I, of course, first uh, saw her in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and then, um, Cloverfield Lane, what is it, 10? 12. 12 Cloverfield Lane, whatever it is. And then, um, and then uh, Death Proof, uh, great actress. Again, Huntress is not a character I'm overly familiar with. I've read some stories with her. She's also appeared in the Birds of Prey TV show. I believe she's an Arrow. I think this is, a, I mean, I love this actress, so I thought she was really cool. And I love the way they played off, again, I don't want to give it away, but playing up her name, the way she introduces herself, I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. They, they, they they touched on the origin from the comics of um, Helena. Or, or Helena. Helena or Hel- Helena Bertinelli. That was cool. So what did you think of Huntress? I, well, I really like Huntress. Like, like I'm okay. a big fan of, like, Huntress and Black Canary and, and mm-hmm. all, and, like, Oracle and all the, the, the standalone DC, like secondary female characters that aren't I guess secondary so meaning not Wonder Woman (laughs) okay yeah but like I think I fell in love with Huntress in the animated Justice League show yes as as a kid um, I just kept reading about her a lot I really really like her I read the Injustice comics and I really like her in those like she's so cool until she's spoiler alert dies um (laughs) it was the years ago um, <laughs> She's back though, right? No. Okay. 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 <laughs> you can cut that. You can okay, cut that. Okay. Okay. You can cut that. No, it's no, fine. I, I'll keep it. She died a while ago. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I, the only th- I don't know. I, they didn't play up on her religious um ness at all. Yeah, she's Catholic. Catholic. She's Catholic. Okay. Yeah, that's where the the cross comes from, I believe. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. Which is fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she doesn't need to be Catholic. I mean, who cares? Black Canary is not white in this movie, so they play around with the legend. Yeah, a maybe bit. maybe Helena doesn't need to be Catholic, but but I like that she's the mob boss and and she went to Italy to train and, and Sicily, back. yeah, specifically Sicily, specifically Sicily. Just like in Godfather, right? They go to Sicily. It's great. Yeah, it's the only place that there is in Italy to go to train. <laughs> yeah, to learn to kill people. <laughs> yeah. Um, Harry, it's, it's oh, a sorry. crossbow. It's not, it's, yeah, I love that. There's so many. Yeah, she's probably hilarious. my favorite written character. Like she was very cool. They did her right. Uh, Harry, well, she's very good with the bow. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Crossbow. No, yeah. <laughs> no, I thought she. Yeah, it was hilarious. The dynamic between her and the the other girls, especially. Yeah, she was <laughs> okay. she was really funny. It's just really dry. Right, the right. Response to it totally different. Brilliant. Yeah, they're all different. Yeah. Okay, so there's one more character we're going to talk about. And that's the bad guy. His name is? 
Black, Black Mask. Black Mask, played by Ewan McGregor. I know him from Train Spotting, but he's most famous for Obi Wan Kenobi, of course, and the Star Wars prequels, and the, hopefully the upcoming TV show. I thought he was great. At first, I was like, I'm not sure how he's playing this character, but then I started to realize, oh, he's like funny and the kind of fabulous a little bit. I don't know. I thought he was really good. And What'd he's you think? insane. Yeah, and he's yeah. insane. Like yeah. criminally insane. Like the opposite kind of insane to Harley. Insane. Right. Like just actually evil and insane mm. and likes to cut people's faces off. Right. Yeah, yeah he was convincing as that. I, I agree with you as well. I, I, I didn't know what was going on with right, this character. Right. I couldn't quite get him. I was right. like, what is he trying to do? Is he's flamboyant. He's right, right. He's a little bit gay, but he's, yeah. he's also really weird and, yeah. and just off. But I think that's what he was supposed to be, right? Right. Because he's mad. Like the scene where he's <clears throat> showing black um, canary around the room. Yeah. All, that's where I was like, oh, so I casually. get it now. I get it now. Okay, yeah. Oh, you're crazy. Yeah. He Obviously was self-obsessed. Like. I also, I, I kind of wonder if the script was written with that as the Joker. And then when Jared Le uh, Leto said he wasn't going to come back, they just rewrote it as Black Mask. It's possible, right? Maybe. Maybe, but he has no interest in, in Harley at all. Well, they could have re yeah. rewrote a couple it, of things. It's possible, but, but I feel mm -hmm. like once Jared Leto showed up on set, they were like, oh, no, we're not, we're not going to do this again. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no more mailing used condoms to fellow cast members to show how crazy you were. Okay, so anyway. And he wasn't even in this one. He was barely <laughs> mentioned. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so unfortunately, I wish we could talk about this all night, but we're going to have to wrap it up. Um, I'm going to start with Harry. Harry, what number rating do you give this movie out of 10 and do you recommend it um, compared to not compared to godfather but compared to other superhero and super villain movies i'd, I'd give it an eight an eight out yeah, of ten I'd recommend it so you'd recommend it really because you know a movie is supposed to be entertaining uh make you laugh and enjoy it you know enjoy yourself so i <sighs> really enjoyed it i i because it's on the same kind of level as deadpool i think okay. i mean deadpool was more entertaining i think for me but uh not a huge amount more. Yeah, okay, uh, for this episode, it's going to be ladies last. I'm just going to say quickly, as I was watching the movie, I was in my head, I'm like, this is a 4 out of 10, this is a 4 out of 10. It did get better, so maybe I'll give it a 6, but I, I have a feeling there's a director's cut in there somewhere that maybe will be on Blu-ray that maybe is 7 or 8. But yeah, I don't know at this point if I can recommend it. Other than some of the humor and the fact that they kind of become a family at the end, that was really cool. But overall, I think... There's a lot of problems with this movie. What do you think? It's like if the Spice Girls girl power was sincere and not a joke. Like, that's what this movie is to me. It's Wait, actual girl power. You think the Spice Girls are a joke? Hold on. <laughs> well, it, it's not. It wasn't seriously girl power. Oh. Were, look. Well, then okay. For the first time in a long time, I felt like movies are starting to be for me and also able to be enjoyed by men, which is fine. I mean, you guys can have movies, I guess. Um... <laughs> But I've also lived a long time, and movies have never been for me that weren't, like, ponies and glitter. So, like, watching... Or Jem. Eh, eh. <laughs> Don't drag Jem into this, okay? okay. She did nothing. Don't debase Jem. Yeah, she did, she's no part in this conversation mm -hmm. of feminism. Um, it's just interesting to watch a movie where a bunch of women are wearing amazing clothes and outfits that I want, and I can't wait for the cosplayers to get a, a hold of that are like revealing outfits, but not sexualized on film. It's not boobs in the camera first. It's not, oh, pouty lips and like no facial expressions. Black Canary screams and bares her teeth. Like she's not worried. Nobody's worried about these girls looking pretty on camera. Like in um, Avengers with Scarlet Witch where they didn't want her to look like too... too aggressive right because it wouldn't look nice on camera like these girls weren't worried about looking nice on camera they were worried about looking badass on camera mm. and i think they succeeded in that and i think this is a movie that a lot of women are going to find a lot of fun in going to see especially together it's a very sisterhood movie it's like and like that's i'm so tired of the token badass girl in the group of dudes like just give me all badass girls and no men, men. that's all i want <laughs> Fair point, fair yeah. point. So what yeah. would you give this out of 10? 10. Boom. Mm. <laughs> there you go, eight, folks. Actually. I'll eight, give it eight, eight, actually? So it's not the best eight. movie you ever made? I mean, no. That would definitely be Jim and the Holograms movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go, folks. So you heard it here. 
um, two recommendations and one non-recommendation for Birds of Prey and the fabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna, I, this is overexposed. Wait, hold that thought, hold that thought. Yeah, uh, you know, what else is new? Did you know that the Spice Girls all represented a different fetish? I didn't know, no, I didn't know that. Really? Think about it.